and uh, we've done a lot of work on dengue. A uh, lot of uh, lectures that have taken over the years. It's kind of a summation of all the papers that we have presented so far. So the title is Predictive Markers in Dengue: The Journey So Far. So we all know that basic uh, principle of all hematology analyzers is fluorescent flow cytometry where the forward scatter of the light is depictive of the cell volume or the cell size which means the more the forward scatter the bigger is the cell side scatter is showing the internal cell structure or the granularity which means that the higher the side scatter the more granular is the cell and the side fluorescence light which is telling about the RNA and DNA content of the cell. So, the more the fluorescence, the more immature the cell and more the RNA and DNA content. So, all of us who are using uh, Mindre Analyzer are uh, familiar with this technology SFQ. I will just briefly describe it because I want to enumerate a particular cell line as a predictive marker. So, this cell line here, the green is the lymphocyte which is uh, kind of having moderate cell size but is low on both side scatter and fluorescence so because there is no granularity. Just ahead of the lymphocyte is the monocytic population in pink which is larger in size than the lymphocyte but again is low on the side scatter and fluorescence. In the middle here is the neutrophil and basophil area which is higher on the side scatter because of granularity and to the extreme right is the eosinophilic area which has got the maximum side scatter because of the large granules. And this is the area of interest for which I am showing this cube. This area the small green dots above the pink one are the area of the HFC or the high fluorescent cells. So, this has got a lot of prognostic significance in dengue and these are nothing but your downy cells, virocytes, transformed lymphocytes, call them what they you may. Now, we can uh, give them a number, we can establish a biological reference interval for these virocytes and they have a prognostic role in dengue. So, the rest of the cell lines are not important for the current uh, presentation, so I will skip them. So, first coming to immature platelet fraction, this was the first uh, parameter that gained traction as a prognostic marker for recovery of platelets in thrombocytopenic dengue patients. So, as we all know the high ITP is suggestive of uh, you know uh, hyperactive bone marrow when there is peripheral platelet destruction in conditions like ITP and dengue and of course, low IPF is seen in conditions when there is bone marrow suppression like hypoplasia and aplasia. So, this is the platelet scattergram as comes out of the Mindre analyzer. This turquoise blue and the green area together is the area of the uh, platelet scatter and on the y axis is the forward scatter or the cell size and on the x axis is the fluorescence. So, this shaded green area is the area of the IPF. So, this platelets are not only having high RNA content or are reticulated but also include a significant proportion of the giant platelets. So, IPF is not only reticulated platelet, but you can say it is a summation of both giant as well as reticulated platelets and this has some significance when you are looking at ethnic considerations of IPF especially from patients coming out of East India. So, I am just showing a brief prototype case history how the IPF works in uh, platelet prognosis. This is a 56 year old lady with fever for 3 days NS1 positive. So, this is day 3, platelet count is 171, IPF is 4.5, our normal range is up to 6.6. This is the platelet histogram, perfectly normal, scattergram is fine, the greenish dots are less in number. Day 4, platelet count has reduced to 82, IPF has jumped up to 8.9. Again, platelet histogram, a little distorted but not that bad. You can look at the uh, IPF scatter, it is showing more density now than the previous slide. Day 5, platelet count further reduced 57,000, IPF is 10.4. Again, the histogram and scattergram for the same patient. Day 6, platelet count has further reduced to 42, but now the IPF has also reduced. So, day 5 was the day when we attained peak IPF values because from that point onwards, IPF is again begin to dip. So, day 5 is an important day in this case. Same histograms and scattergram for the same patient. Now, this is day 7. Now, the platelet count has recovered and the IPF is still decreasing. So, from day 5 to day 7 is 48 hours. So, most of the patients in whom we attain peak IPF, usually a platelet recovery happens within 48 to 72 hours. So, it is a useful parameter especially when you know patients are paranoid, both clinicians are paranoid for admissions 
transfusions in a you know resource crunch setting in Delhi. So again histogram and scattergram from the same patient. So this is how the correlation goes like the green dot is the IPF and blue is the platelet. So after peak IPF is attained the platelet recovery usually takes about 48 to 72 hours. So this was our first paper that we presented in AIMS in 2015. It was called peak immature platelet fraction as a predictive marker of platelet recovery in dengue patients. So the objectives were simple. We were trying to establish IPF as a prognostic marker and see that you know within what defined period from peak IPF platelet recovery happens. So we used a simple four step methodology. First we took NS1 antigen or IgM positive dengue patients. Then only reduced to patients who are thrombocytopenic removed all other patients. Then we took patients who had both rising and falling titers so we could establish the peak IPF for each one of our patients. And then finally the optical platelets and time to platelet recovery was monitored on a daily basis for all of these patients. We also established the biological reference interval, did precision study, did smear validation for all the patients. So these are the results. First, peak IPF values of patients range from 5.5 to 38.7 with a mean of 13.5 and standard deviation 6.4, which means that we could not set a ballpark figure to IPF. IPF had to be followed like a trend analysis because each patient will have a different peak IPF value. Secondly, 86% of our patients whose peak IPF of more than 20% were ethnically from West Bengal and Bihar, typically the Harris platelet syndrome belt. So later on this had some use in other studies when they tried to establish the you know IPF normal ranges from Eastern India which were roughly 2 to 3 times those that are there in Northern India. 100% patients showed platelet recovery and 86% within 72 hours and peak IPF had a strong correlation with time to platelet recovery. So as they say your first time lucky we got sorry. We got the first prize for uh, this paper in 2015. Then we presented another paper next year where we were trying to compare IPF across different platforms although not related to this study. Uh, where also we managed to bag a prize. Then this is the next important parameter high fluorescence cells or the HFC that I showed in the SF cube. So these are nothing but your large lymphocytes and typically your downy cells or your you know virocytes whatever. So we have established a normal range for these now on our analyzer it is up to 0 0.4. So this is again I am showing a prototype patient this is dengue NS1 positive patient day 4 of fever. We are beginning from day 4 because HFC usually begins to rise from day 4. The first 3 days HFC is perfectly normal because as dengue pro progresses from relative neutrophilia to relative lymphocytosis the evolution of HFC begins roughly from around day 4. So on day 4 this platelet count of this patient was 91,000 and the HFC was 0.6 percent. So these small tiny green dots here these are the HFC very few dots here this is depicting the HFC. Same patient day 5 platelet count went down to 58,000 HFC jumped up to 7.7 percent. So between day 4 and day 5 there is a 10 fold jump in HFC. So this is important. The jump of HFC is important in the prognosis of dengue. So again you can look at the scatter plot this HFC area is now having much more density than the previous day. Day 6 platelet further decreased to 53 HFC moved to 15.3 the jump was only 2, two times the previous day. The maximum jump happened on day 5. Again the scatter plot from the same patient. Day 7 platelet further reduced to 41,000, HFC jumped to 19.9. Again scatter plot histogram from the same patient. Now this is day 8. Now the platelet has recovered to 54 and the HFC has gone down to 15.2. So the time the HFC goes down is roughly the same time that the platelet moves up. So this is not an important time, the important time is the jump. We followed it for another day, day 9 platelet further went up, HFC reduced to 4.9. So what I want to say here is that HFC increases from day 4 of onset of fever in dengue patients and platelet recovery happens in HFC again within 48 to 72 hours from the HFC jump of 3 to 4 times. 
like it happens within 48 to 72 hours from the peak IPF. So, HFC is also a good prognostic marker of platelet recovery just like IPF. And we found our own algorithm that kind of works well in all uh, dengue season or the post monsoon season in Delhi. A febrile patient in monsoon season with a platelet count less than 50,000, IPF more than 20 percent and HFC more than 5 percent is almost certainly dengue even irrespective of the serological status that is important. Because even in a serological status there is a blind window. The NS1 is 95 percent positive only for the first four days. Fifth day, the sensitivity drops to 65%, sixth day drops to 35%. And these day, antibodies sometimes take day 7 to come. This fifth and sixth day of dengue could be such where both antigen and antibody could be negative and patient could still be dengue. This algorithm is a giveaway. We ask the patient to repeat antibody after 48 hours and it invariably becomes positive. So, this is the third paper that we did in 2019 in ISLH. Here what we did was we evaluated all the predictive markers and tried to see which one is the best amongst them all. So what we did here was again same four step we took dengue patients ruled out uh, patients who were only thrombocytopenic took the criteria uh, rising falling titers took the HFC jumps and these are the parameters that we measured mean platelet volume, immature platelet fraction, high fluorescence IPF. HFCs, neutrophil lymphocyte ratio, platelet lymphocyte ratio and last but not the least platelet HFC ratio. See, we are trying to see amongst all these plethora of prognostic markers which is going to give us the best results. So, these are the results. As you can see, this is IPF, HFC slightly outperforming the IPF but the best performance was coming from the platelet HFC ratio and it was natural to happen because as the platelets are decreasing, HFC is increasing. So, when the numerator is decreasing and the denominator is increasing, the intraday falls would have an augmentational effect. That is why PHR performed the best amongst all these markers. And among the fall and jump markers, again PHR fall, which is an intraday, sorry, which is an intraday fall of more than 50 percent, PHR fall was the best predictive marker. So, we could establish the clinical utility of all the markers and PHR fall was the most efficacious markers amongst all the parameters that we had analyzed. So, with these words, this is what we presented at uh, ISLH Vancouver. This is the panoramic view of the city of Vancouver. With these words, I like to thank you all.